These are 10 cartoon characters that have broken laws and could be spending time behind bars. And we're gonna list them from three years in prison to 15 million years in prison, starting with Pokemon's Ash Ketchum, who could be charged for one of the weirdest reasons ever. In the first episode of the Pokemon show, Ash announces to his mother that he's leaving home to try to become the world's greatest Pokemon trainer. He plans to do this by catching magical creatures called Pokemon and then training them to battle. But the problem is that battling Pokemon could give authorities the right to charge Ash with animal fighting. And since Pokemon battles are usually held in large arenas with huge crowds, everyone in attendance could also be charged with animal fighting. But how many years would they get in prison? Well, that would depend if the authorities could prove that Pokemon are actually animals. Some Pokemon are plants, others look like humans, and some are just straight up weird. So while animal fighting sometimes carries a sentence of three years, Ash and his friends would get their sentence reduced to just a small fine. And while Ash can count himself lucky, this next character definitely can't because he'd be charged for beating up a thousand prison guards. In the first Kung Fu Panda movie, a villain by the name of Tai Lung is chained up 1,000 feet below ground in a high security prison. Tai notices a feather laying nearby and uses it to free himself. However, in his attempt to escape, he alerts the nearby guards. In an effort to stop Tai from getting away, the guards use crossbows, handheld weapons, and even 100,000 arrows. But Tai fights back and uses a stack of dynamite to blow up the remaining guards. Beating up the guards would get Tai charged with assault and battery, adding an extra five years to his remaining prison sentence. And while five extra years is pretty bad, it's pretty minor when compared to our next character's prison sentence. The crime happens in the movie Toy Story 2, when Al McWiggin, a greedy toy collector, is seen looking for toys at a yard sale. He spots the toy Woody and decides he has to have him for his toy collection. So after distracting the woman who's running the yard sale, Al throws Woody into his bag and takes off. Now normally, stealing a toy like this might only get someone a small fine, but this situation is actually a whole lot worse. Later in the movie, Al tries to sell Woody to a museum in Japan. This means that Al could be charged with transportation of stolen goods, which carries with it a jail time of up to 10 years. And speaking of keeping something you probably shouldn't, we gotta talk about a little girl whose exotic pet isn't even from Earth. It happens in the movie Lilo and Stitch when the main character, Lilo, finds a creature she believes to be a dog. It turns out the dog is actually an alien, which could get her in some serious legal trouble. Since the US government refuses to acknowledge the existence of aliens, Lilo and her family would be left with no choice but to define Stitch as a human being. And because the island where she lives is governed under US law, Lilo could be charged with harboring a person that's in the country illegally. Except that as a minor, it wouldn't be Lilo who needs to worry. It's actually her sister and guardian Nina who would end up catching a charge. Harboring a person that's in the country illegally would get her up to 20 years in prison. But up next, we have one of the most evil cartoon characters ever. In the movie The Incredibles, Mr. Incredible is asked to help destroy a robot that is wreaking havoc on a remote island. After defeating the robot, Mr. Incredible learns that the entire thing was a setup by an evil supervillain named Syndrome. Syndrome kidnaps Mr. Incredible and holds him captive, using torture techniques to try to get him to talk. Kidnapping and torturing someone are both very serious crimes, which would get Syndrome sentenced to 40 years in prison. But if you think that's bad, there are a lot more cartoon characters coming up. Like SpongeBob, whose terrible driving would actually get him billions of dollars in fines. Or Gru, who's so crazy that he almost destroyed all of humanity by stealing the moon. But first we gotta talk about Opera, the browser that I just can't get enough of. In a world where your online privacy can easily be compromised, it's important to protect yourself. That's why I love that Opera browser comes with its own built-in VPN. It's free, unlimited, and doesn't collect any information. The Opera VPN makes sure I'm protected while browsing, and all my personal info stays safe. Opera also has an ad blocker, which blocks ads in one click, which means my pages load faster and everything is smoother. I can browse privately and hide my location, which is crucial for protecting my data. It also makes browsing 10 times easier. While doing the research for videos like this, I need to keep my tabs super organized, which is where Opera's tab island feature makes my life way smoother. I can group related tabs, collapse them to save space, and even drag and drop tabs between different groups. And if I get a message from someone, I don't even have to quit my browser to see it. It's all integrated with Opera, no extensions needed. Opera enhances every part of what I do online, from ensuring my privacy to making my browsing experience as smooth and enjoyable as possible. Opera is free, so make sure to download using the link in the description for a special offer. But now we have to talk about the character whose terrible plans would destroy the entire planet. Gru is a criminal whose goals are totally insane. In the past, he's stolen the Times Square Jumbotron, the Statue of Liberty, and the Eiffel Tower from Las Vegas. However, he takes things to a whole new level when he decides he wants to steal the moon. Gru and his army of minions actually manage to shrink the moon and snatch it right out of the sky. 
Taking the moon would cause all sorts of problems on Earth, like affecting the tides, wildlife, and even human behavior. So legally speaking, Gru would be in some serious trouble. For one, he'd be breaking the Outer Space Treaty, which is an agreement between countries that says that no one can own anything from outer space. This means Gru would be breaking international laws while committing theft. It's difficult to say how many years he'd get in prison, but it'd be a lot. It's also possible that he would have destroyed the Apollo landing sites that are on the moon, meaning that he could be charged with destruction of government property, which carries a fine of $250,000. But if you thought the crimes of a supervillain with an army of minions was bad, wait till you see the harm that a seven-year-old girl can do. For years, Dora has been exploring the world with her monkey companion, Boots. But there's a crazy crime hiding in plain sight. In Dora's suspected home country of Mexico, it's illegal to own some exotic pets, including monkeys like Boots. It could be argued that their adventures pose a significant risk to Boots' welfare. And considering she's been traveling with Boots for 19 years, she's looking at fines likely over $500,000. And speaking of endangering animals, Scooby-Doo and gang might seem like hometown heroes, but they're actually criminals. Throughout their adventures, they routinely enter private property, abandoned buildings, and government facilities. During these stunts, they could be charged with anything from multiple counts of breaking and entering to trespassing on classified areas. What's more is by bringing their Great Dane into dangerous and unpredictable situations, the gang could easily be charged with animal endangerment. These continued crimes could earn Scooby-Doo and the gang up to a year in prison each time they invade a new property. And with 293 TV appearances and more than 40 movies, that means the gang are looking at more than 300 years behind bars. But next up we have SpongeBob, whose crimes would have him owing billions of dollars. Now SpongeBob is a super positive dude, and most people would argue that his antics are harmless and silly. But that silliness can sometimes get him into serious trouble especially when it comes to his skills behind the wheel. In multiple episodes, SpongeBob can be seen driving distracted, cutting people off, and causing them to crash. What makes this even worse is that in an episode titled Miss Puff, You're Fired, it's revealed that SpongeBob has taken his driving test and failed over a million times. I promise it won't take me a million tries this time. So if SpongeBob was brought to court, he'd face fines for over a million crashes. His sentencing, however, would be determined by a pretty major legal distinction, whether his vehicle is defined as a car or a boat. If we follow the show's logic and assume that the vehicle is actually a car, SpongeBob could be charged with driving on the wrong side of the road, speeding, and failure to yield, which means across more than 1 million accidents, SpongeBob would be looking at fines between $650 million to $3.5 billion. But treat SpongeBob's vehicle as a boat, and he's looking at up to $5,000 per crash. Meaning across his 1 million accidents, he could be fined a total of $5 billion. And while a $5 billion fine is crazy, it doesn't even come close to our last character, whose terrible crimes would get him millions of years in prison. When faced with a major crisis, Henry J. Waternoose takes drastic action, which could land him with the biggest sentence so far. Mr. Waternoose is the CEO of Monsters Incorporated, whose business model is sending terrifying creatures into private residences to scare children. But when Monster Society is faced with an energy crisis, Mr. Waternoose devises a new plan to get the power he needs. In this clip, we see Waternoose's plan to kidnap children and put them in a machine. What's worse is, Waternoose's scream extractor needs a consistent supply of children to function, so we can only guess how many children he would have needed to keep the machine up and running. Taking those children could be considered anything from simple child endangerment to a form of child abuse, and not to mention kidnapping. If we consider each individual scare extracted by Waternoose's company as a kidnapped child, Waternoose is looking at just under 800,000 instances of kidnapping. And with each kidnapping charge usually resulting in a minimum of 20 years in prison, Waternoose is looking at over 15 million years behind bars. Now that's just crazy, but if you enjoyed this video, you're going to love the next one, so click here to watch it.